Okay, so if you want to learn how to use ChatGPT's new fantastic Vision API, which you need to have GPT-4 for, you need to pay for that, um, and you want to make a really cool Flutter app like this, so where I can basically, I created a fish detector, because I have an app called DiveSpot, and I wanted to see uh, what whether it was able to understand what fish it was looking at and identify the species and uh, give me some more information like uh, a description and even where you can find them in the world. So if you want to find out how to make this, watch the end. Like and subscribe. Also, if you look in the link below, um, I've created an article, as I always do, um, where I've uh, described and given the code on how to interact with this flat uh, ChatGPT API using uh, Flutter. So, um, and you can see here, I've inputted that image, it detected it, it said hammerhead shark, species Spirinidae, I think that's how you pronounce it, description, a group of sharks, so uh, characterized by a distinctive structure of their heads, which are flattened and laterally extended into a hammer shape. So, what else, let's try another one. I think this is a picture of a reef. There's lots of fish on here that I don't even know what they're called. And let's see if it's good enough and it can detect that. One of the things you could also do with this is literally to detect anything. So depending on your use case for whatever you want to make, um, you could use the ChatGPT Vision API to understand um, anything about the world, whether it be understanding what kind of plants you're looking at or, or whatever because um, it can literally see better than I. So, yeah, it's anthias. So you can see anthias. I think it's the orange ones. These are small, brightly coloured fish that are often seen in large schools above coral reefs. So, uh, there you go. This is, um, this is what I'm going to show you how to make. Well, I'm just going to talk you through the code. So if I turn that off now. Um, so firstly, you would need to go to ChatGPT, and uh, you need to go to the API keys, so Google ChatGPT API keys, log in with your ChatGPT account. You'll need to pay for it, it's about £20 a month, um, and then uh, you need to uh, create a new key, give it a name, like uh, test key. Uh, then it gives you, shows you the key one time. Um, I'm going to delete this key immediately because it's a live video. I'm also going to delete the key I'm going to use in there in the code as well. So you're going to be really careful about that if you're creating public uh, applications, demonstrations or, or anything that you put out there on, 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 on uh, GitHub for example. So I've also got a link to a more advanced version of this on my GitHub um, uh, which is actually a much better layout. Um, but you want to be careful about API keys and not exposing them because well firstly it will cost you money if people get hold of them. So right, what we how is this? How do we interact with this um, API? So without looking at any of the other code, let's just look straight at uh, the Vision API. They have examples here. They have some in Python, um, uh, curl request, and Node.js. So these would be things that may be running on the back end. So maybe your app would submit the the photo to the back end, and it would process it. That's um, that's possible, uh, but what I've done here is I've created one that will actually take the image and then upload it to the API and get a response immediately. So there are many ways you can do that. So I've got a function here called detect fish, and it's going to return. Um, it's going to. Uh, I've done something uh, a little bit um, different here. I've I've asked ChatGPT when it finds out. Let me blow this code up. So you can see it on the web. Um, actually, I don't need it that big. Uh, so what I've done is I've asked it to um, return a a, a a JSON, which is JavaScript object notation, a JSON which is structured by having fish, and then um, it's going to have an array of different species that it detects in the picture, so like name, species, description, location, and whether it's endangered or not. Um, also GPS cords, and I've asked it to do that. So um, that means that when I get the data back, I'm able to pass it normally, um, store it into a, 
you know, I know I'll know exactly what's going to be in which field. I'm not just going to get a load of text. Um, that will make it easier for me to, if I wanted to store the information in my own database. Um, and uh, it's just normally how you handle data. So yeah, the first thing uh, we need to do is get the image. So I had to do slightly more complicated code here to get the image because I'm running this on FlutLab and it needs to access uh, your files through sort of a web-based app. So that's what's going on here. But essentially we're asking the user um, for an image. Um, we're using the image picker and we're going to the gallery. You could make it so that you could use the camera as well. If you look at the GitHub repository, I've actually done an example which if you build it onto your phone, you can use the camera. So there's two options. Um, are we doing it through the flat, Flutter web or are we doing it on a mobile? If we're doing it on a mobile, we simply get the picked image um, and then we uh, display that image in the image widget. So um, if you look in the widget code up here, uh, there I have a, a stack of all the things that are going on and then we have a column of things and then we've got uh, the pick image button. Um, uh, then we have uh, that would be where the image would be, the image widget, I think. And then we have an elevated button uh, below, which says, um, what does it say on the image, on the button? It will say, be, say like detect fish, right? Um, and then after that, um, I've got a um, a loading wheel. Um, and that loading wheel, uh, and then we have a list view, right? So, and the list view will display all the all the te text or analysis as returns, right? So, um, at this bit here is where we put the image when we get it back. That's what I'm trying to say. So we get that image back and then it, it appears on the screen. Then they press the detect button, which is here, detect fish. And then there are two things that happen. Um, we set the loading state to true, so the loading wheel will show. And then we, because it's a, uh, a stateful widget, so the user is doing something on the screen that's gonna update it, we need to reset set state. That's gonna cause a redraw of the screen going to show the loading wheel etc and then in set state we go off to our function um, and we uh, uh, detect fish and we get a result here so let's go and see what's going on in, in detect fish as I, as I said we need to check whether we've actually got an image from the user we're turning it into image bytes so six base 64 encoding that is one of the things you need to do. If you're going to submit an image to ChatGPT's Vision API, it needs to be uh, converted to Base64. Uh, and then this is where the magic really happens. And this is what the API, how you interact with the API. You need to have the URL or URI that goes to V1 chat completions. Then you need to JSON. We're going to get some JSON back. Um, and then you need to have your API key. I'm going to deactivate this before I post a video, so this won't work. And you only get this API key if you have a paid account with ChatGPT. So you need to pay £20 a month. Um, obviously, I'll talk about that at the end. But if you do create an app that uses this Vision API, you will want to make sure that you've got some kind of a pricing structure uh, so that people aren't going to use your key and they're going to pay for it. One option could be you get them to put their key so they have access to that. Um, I think that could be a perfectly reasonable option and it, it saves a hassle of, you know, you can just create the app and then if they want to use that feature, you could you could ask them to go and get the key themselves. Um, of course, you may want to, the, but he, them to pay for that product as well, but it's up to you how you manage that. So, and then we've got uh, the body. So you have to send the headers, which has the key in and the, what's going to return. Then we've got the body, and we are going to encode this body, this message. Firstly, we've got a message to uh, the uh, the role. We've got different roles here. We've got the system, so that's how we want ChatGPT to behave. Basically, I'm telling it to behave like a capable of identifying fish. And then we want to send the user information. 
So uh, in here we have um, the text prompt. So this is where I'm asking it to see what sea creatures it can see and then return a JSON in a certain structure, as I said. And then we have the data, image data. So we've converted that image that we've got um, into basic to full encoding and we are submitting that. Um, and then we can set here how many tokens you want to receive back. So, some more tokens, longer response, more it will cost you, or the actual response. The response, the whole there and back, I did a, kind of a, tried to calculate it. It's about just under a cent to send the data, and then maybe to get the response, it could be two cents. Um, so you need to, you need to, again, you need to bear that in mind and make sure people are paying for it and not put your API key on there because people will just use it and make a mess. Um, so it will cost you a lot of money. So then we need to check, have we got a 200 response? Did we get the data back? Did everything go all right? And here I'm just doing some print statements of to see whether that happened. If we didn't, something went wrong, we returned no fish, nothing detected. However, if it did happen, we're going to process that response. So we're going to have to process the JSON. So we've created another function down here called process response. Um, we're passing in the data and we're going to return back um, a, uh, a dictionary of the data as well. So the response you get back from ChatGPT will have some other things in it other than just the JSON. So what I had to do here was I had to strip the um, response so that uh, it, we only want the part of the response that starts with a, a curly bracket, ends with a curly bracket, and then we know everything in between that is the JSON, and it, it, we're going to be able to convert that into JSON. So that's basically what we're doing here. And then we start, um, it gives us a start and end index, um, and then the JSON string is going to be a substring of that, of that content response returned, um, it's interesting if you look at what the actual response is. There's a lot of things that ChatGPT give back to you, uh, and maybe you want to use that somehow. Um, uh, possibly there's information about the uh, number of tokens used, and you can calculate a cost based on that as well. So, because uh, that's how they measure things based in tokens, and you pay per token um, or per thousand tokens. And then, so we're going to convert it to a JSON string, then we're going to decode it into JSON and then finally we're able to put it into uh, arrays and dictionaries which is what I'm doing here I'm creating a list of fish details so say there are 10 fish in there I'm going to get an array of 10 dictionaries uh, um, of fish data um, and that will um, have in it if you looked in it what I specified a description a name etc and then we're going to return um, we're going to map that response uh, into this dynamic list, uh, and then we're going to return that back to here, which is going to turn it back to our widget, which is here, and that's what we then we deal with the response, and then we're going to update the state. We're going to refresh the screen. How we're we going to update it? We're simply going to get. Um, we're basically creating a string out of all the information here. Now, that would, you know, you could do something better with that. You could display it in a nice list, but we're creating a big string out of all the data returned. Um, if there's no fish returned, then we say no fish. If there is, then we say it's complete. Um, but we're updating this fish list in set state, which means the widget will be withdrawn, will redrawn, and then this list view, which will no longer be a fish list and will no longer be empty, will then draw uh, a list of all the uh, of the fish that have been detected in that picture. So that's how you interact with the API. Whether you're using Python, Node.js or whatever, you would do it in ex almost exactly the same way. And you have to get it right because um, if you have the wrong keys here, it will return a bad response or something. And you would need to keep checking this page here to make sure that you understand um, what what they expect is going to be in the, um, the message or the header um, and make sure you get that right. Of course, this may change. It may get updated over time. It often does. Um, I know one of my applications, this one, Ask Ben, 
stop working because they changed the, the uh, URI. It was, um, you used to have to put them, or I thought you used to have to put the model in the URI, but actually you need to define what model of ChatGPT you're going to use in the body now. And I think they changed that. Um, so, for example, if we go back to here, this is the API key bit. We go to models. You can see all the models that you have access to. Um, if you are, and then you need to have a paid account to have access to any of the API models. Um, but let's click on ChatGPT4 because it's the best. And these are all the ones that you've got access to. So you can see if you want the latest one, it's ChatGPT4. The latest GPT4 model it reduces laziness because sometimes ChatGPT get lazy and it won't give you everything you wanted. Um, there's also, uh, and then also, this is the vision one, so that's the one in which you can submit images to to understand what's in there. Um, uh, you can click on that to learn more about it and what the what the uh, uh, updating. I think that came out on the 20th, November the sixth. Uh, the other thing you want to be aware of, which they mention here, I believe is the pricing so at the bottom of the vision api so i've put all these links in the video below they have a little description of how they bill you so um and if you look at my article if you look right at the end i've tried to estimate this so i've got this image which is some mackerel i saw diving in egypt um it's its scale is 1170 by 1070 right um uh, so uh, it, they, they're going to charge you based on the size, right? Um, there's a little uh, pricing tool, actually. So if you go to pricing, chat GPT API, this should come up in Google. Um, there's actually a little tool here, and you put in your 1170, wasn't it? And 10. 1071. So that tells me approximately it's going to cost what price per tokens per 1k thousand tokens is 0 0.01 one cent. So um, it needs two tiles, whatever that means, of 512 by 512. Um, so total tiles is 2 times 2 is 4, base tokens 85. Tile tokens, 170 tokens, 680 tokens, 765 tokens, so it's 0 0.00765, so almost one cent. Um, that doesn't include the response you get either. So, and how do you calculate that? Um, you can have a look on that pricing page, but uh, there's an output, so input, uh, cent per 1k tokens, output, what they give you back, is 3 cents per 1k tokens. So, notice here, I I said 1,000 tokens maximum. So it could potentially cost me almost 4 cents per request. So that's something you've got to bear in mind and think about if you're creating an app where people are going to use your API key a lot, how are you going to charge them? How are they going to pay for it? Because you don't want to get a bill for that. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this video. It's an informative. Have a look in the uh, the link below the video. Um, here, I put different links to my Medium article, that Flat Lab repository, my GitHub repository, which has some more advanced, like nicely laid out code, and then some links about pricing and the APIs. So thank you and see you in the next video.